Hi guys, welcome back to UK Stocks with Anna. So today we're going to look at two UK pharmaceutical companies that have a double digit upside potential according to our analysts. If you haven't seen this feature yet, let me just quickly show you. So on tip ranks, you can actually search different stock comparisons. So for example, you can see here we've got banking shares, gaming shares, large cap dividend, pharma, biotech, tech and top dividend. And on each of these, you can actually filter on US, Canada and UK markets. So you can go here and see on pharma and biotech, the two biggest ones are AstraZeneca and GlaxoSmithKline. So, so they are the two biggest pharmaceutical companies in the UK. And as we can see here, they are respectively the world's fifth and sixth largest pharmaceutical companies measured by 2009 market share. They are both really, really well-known companies worldwide, and I'd be surprised if you haven't heard of them already. So let's have a look at the one with the higher upside potential and the stronger buy rating first, and that is AstraZeneca. You've probably heard about them recently because they are one of the big producers of the V word currently, which I don't think we're allowed to say in videos, but you've probably heard of them. So let's have a quick look at what they are saying. So they are a British Swedish multinational pharmaceutical and biotech company, and they have a portfolio of products for major diseases in areas including oncology, cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, infection, neuroscience, respiratory and inflammation. They were founded in 1999, which is 22 years ago. And since the merger, it has been among the world's largest pharmaceutical companies and has made numerous corporate acquisitions. Their primary listing is on the London Stock Exchange and they are a constituent of the FTSE 100. But they also do have secondary listings on the Nasdaq, New York and other exchanges. So let's have a look at AstraZeneca here. So as you can see from all analysts, we have a strong buy rating. 10 out of 11 analysts say this is currently a buy and only one says it's a sell. Now, with the all analyst rating, we've got an average 12.75% upside, but also the low price target is actually quite low. So there is a lot of volatility here in these price targets. Now, if we filter on top analysts only, it actually goes up on the upside. So it's actually a 14% upside based on these three top analyst ratings. And you can see here actually on this one that even the low price target is higher than the current price, which is always a good sign. Now, if we look at the stock analysis as well, you can see there is a lot of green here. So the smart score, which shows whether a stock is likely to outperform or underperform the S&P 500, is sitting at a strong nine. So it means that based on all of the factors that go into the smart score, which you can read about on the TipRanks website, it is really, really likely to outperform the S&P 500. We've seen that the analyst ratings are a strong buy, but we can also see that we've also got a bullish blogger opinion and news sentiment as well. If we do look at the stock chart, it is sitting near its all time high, but not quite there yet at the moment, but it has been generally consistently growing over time. So the trend might continue and you could see some good gains here. They do also have a dividend yield of 2.4%, which is actually pretty decent. It's not super high, but considering this is a pharmaceutical company, it is gonna experience growth. So I think with the mix of dividends and growth, you could see some really decent returns here. With the news here, we can see why the news is fairly bullish at the moment. So we've got all these things, which I'm not going to say because then I will get filtered out on the YouTube search but obviously it all relates to this thing here, but there's obviously a lot of positivity here about exports of this. Okay, so let's have a look at the second one now, and that is GlaxoSmithKline, which is GSK. They are also a British multinational pharmaceutical company, as this is what we're looking at. And they were established almost 21 years ago in December of 2000. And in 2009, they were the world's sixth largest pharmaceutical company, as we mentioned before. It does have a primary listing on the London Stock Exchange and is a constituent of the FTSE 100. 
Similar to AstraZeneca, it also has a secondary listing on the New York Stock Exchange. However, you can see here that in 2012, they were actually involved in the largest healthcare fraud case to date in the US and the largest settlement by a drug company. It was to do with promotion of drugs for unapproved uses, failure to report safety data, and kickbacks to physicians in the US, which is crazy. But despite that, they continue to be one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. One of the things to note with GSK is that they don't actually only look at pharmaceuticals. So if we have a look here, you can see that they actually look at many different things, including consumer healthcare. So they sell things like oral healthcare, including brands that you'll probably know, like Aquafresh and Sensodyne. They have Horlicks, they have Night Nurse, which you'll probably know, Nicorette Nicotine Replacements, etc. So actually the first time I heard of GSK in terms of the investing sense, I always thought about how on the back of my toothpaste, I always see manufactured by GlaxoSmithKline, which was really interesting to me um, to then find out they were also a pharmaceutical company, but that's besides the point. So let's have a look at what our analysts are saying here. So we can see here that on all analysts, it is a moderate buy. So eight out of 19 say buy, nine say hold and two say sell. However, the average upside of all of these is still 10.9, which is pretty decent. But similar to AstraZeneca on here, the lowest price target is below the current price. If we filter just on top analysts, however, it moves to a hold rating currently. Still 13.57% average upside, however, but that low rating remains quite low. If we look at the stock analysis, the smart score is neutral. So not likely to outperform, but also not likely to underperform the S&P 500, which isn't too bad. The S&P 500 has pretty decent returns. But the one thing to note here is the insider activity, where we can see that 300,000 pounds of shares were bought by insiders in the last three months. And whilst it doesn't actually show us who this person is, it does say it was an informative buy, which could signal a lot of confidence in the company. But if we look at the stock chart, we can actually see that it hasn't recovered to pre-2020 levels yet, which could suggest that even if we get up to almost that all-time high, you could have a fairly decent gain. So it's just a case of, is that going to happen or not? It does seem like ever since 2020, it has been going downhill. However, from March of this year, it has started creeping back up again. And prior to 2020, it was on a steady upwards trend following this downwards trend here. So if we have a look at the news and have a look at this article here, buy Glaxo stock because its turnaround could be accelerated. And this one here, which says GlaxoSmithKline files US application for approval of its MMR vaccine. Those are two news articles which suggest a potential positive upside here. So we can see here, GSK has submitted a marketing application to the FDA seeking approval for use in its active immunization against infection by measles, mumps and rubella, which is shortened to MMR. Now it is already available in Europe since 1997, but if approved, they would provide US healthcare providers with another MMR choice. So it will be interesting to see how that plays out because it means that there could be potential upside here if this goes through. But equally, if it doesn't, then it could shoot down. So a little bit of a risk there, but I've personally got both of these shares in my portfolio and I will be adding to them myself. So I would love to hear what you think and whether you will be adding to these or purchasing them at all. Um, but that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye.